Hey there friends, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping in today. I'm really happy to be part of the Crafting About Reading YouTube hop that's going on today. This is created by my awesome scrappy friend Becky Adams and we have several other scrappers joining us today and we're all making layouts that focus on reading, libraries, books, or school and I've got two cute pictures of my youngest daughter just chilling out on the floor with her blanket and Finding Nemo, and I'm um, going to make those work today. And I'm going to use Paige Evans' Pick Me Up collection to start here. I've got this paper that I've had hoarded for quite a while that's got all these books, and I thought, well, since my daughter's reading in the pictures, I wanted to focus on books. And so that's where I'm going to start, and I'm just going to start to fussy cut out a rainbow variety of colors here. And so, um, I cut them out and just, just tried to come up with an idea of what to do. So I went to my silhouette and I just typed out the word read in some block font and then cut it out really big on some white card stock and then tore it. And I'm going to try to back it with all those books. I don't know. That idea just popped into my head. So that's where we're going to start and see if it goes anywhere. I'm going to take a picture of this to make sure that I remember the order of all these books. And I'm going to do a lot of mixed media on this layout because um, there is a lot of white. I've got smooth, thick white cardstock as the background, and then I cut reed on some textured white cardstock. So I got to add some some color and some interest to this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and coat the whole background with some clear gesso. This is the Art Basics Finibear, and then I'm going to add a little bit of the same gesso to the read it's not a, it's not a cut file but it's just I typed the word and cut it out so it's you know I did this in my silhouette cameo so I can't really call it a cut file because it's just a word but um I don't even remember what font I used but just a big block blocky style font so I know that all of those colorful books are going to go behind there and I wanted to do just kind of one solid neutral color on the background and I'm going to go with that periwinkle bluish purplish color um, so I'm going to mix three shimmer sprays here. I'm going to mix faded jeans. No, not faded jeans. Blue jeans. Yeah, blue jeans. I'm thinking of my Distress Oxide color. Blue jeans, deep blue sea, and cotton candy spritz. And when you mix all those together, you get that purplish, bluish color. And so that's where I'm going to start. And I just want to create sort of a, a color wash, kind of going from the top to the bottom, because I know where the books and the, the read part are going to go and I want this to kind of be behind that and then a little bit above it and below it. So we're just going to start there and see where this takes us. Um, I did want to say that Becky is creating this YouTube hop in honor of the anniversary of her son's passing a, a few years ago. That's coming up on July 4th and his birthday is July 2nd. So her family has created a really awesome library project in his honor and uh, what they do is they collect book donations to send to the local library in his name in his honor and I'm gonna link down below the Amazon wish list so anybody could go on this wish list and purchase books and have them sent in Austin's honor and I think that is just the most beautiful and precious thing to do in his honor so I'm gonna link all of that down below if you're interested in donating to that I know I definitely want to do that. So what I'm going to do with Reed here, like I said, we, we're just starting with plain old white stuff. So I've got to jazz it up. And the first thing that I thought about doing was adding a little bit of shadowing around the letters. So I just pulled out my gray gelato and scribbled a little bit of it on my desk there. And I'm using just a little bit of water and a really skinny, tiny brush to just paint and smudge some color around the edges so it looks a little bit weathered uh, and dimensional. That's where we're going to start and my intention was to leave the paper white since all those colorful books are going to go behind it. And Now that I've got the shimmers dry on the background we're going to see how this goes. I picked that bluish color on the background because I felt like it was a good neutral color to to put against all of the bright colors of the books. And we'll see how that looks here in a minute if I need to add more or change it. But uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna go back to those three colors that I used to add the blue color, and then I'm gonna mix them together again. 
and do a little bit of splattering. And it looks really dark, but it's I'm going to dab some of it up so it's more of a, a lighter effect with the splatters. So I took a break and then decided to hand stitch. What? Where did this idea come from? I have no idea. Does anyone even remember the last time I hand stitched? No, neither do I. I mean, it was obviously the last time I could see without taking my glasses off because now I have to take them off. And then I realized, why don't you use your old mouse pad as a little punching thingy? I don't even know what to call it. My point is, is I took a needle and I punched around the R and then I I am going to use some embroidery thread. And I did peel it apart because there's six strands. I peeled it apart so it was only three strands. And I'm going to stitch around all of these letters. And I'm going to go from pink to orange. This is what I've got so far. I've done the R and the E. It looks okay. I was questioning my decision making at this point, thinking, was this a good idea? I decided to keep going, so we're going to go with the A and the D. I'm going to go with yellow around the A and then that periwinkle bluish color around the D. And I'm glad I did this because I feel like it it adds some color and some interest and some texture, which you know I love. And I like that it makes the edges of the letters stand out a little bit more. So I like that I did that. It did take some time, but oh well. All right, so now I'm going to come back in with all the books and try to stick them in and underneath all of the letters here. And I, I want them to take up most of the area, but I still want some of the, the blue background that I painted to kind of show through. And I want them to be obvious that they're books, even though some of them are going to be hidden or parts of them are going to be hidden behind the edges of the, the letters. I still want it to be obvious that they're books back there so and I like how that looks I like that this gives you know a lot of pattern it gives a lot of color um, and it it gives me a title to start with you know I can add on to it but I like it so I'm gonna start to glue these down and I'm gonna glue the books flat to the background and then pop up read so I like how that's looking I'm going to use some adhesive foam here and just cut it up in all the little shapes that I need and then stick it to the back and this is going to pop this up off the page and just create a little bit of shadowing effect and I love that so I know that that is definitely going to go there so I can go ahead and glue that down and I'm using the scotch tacky glue in the fine liner bottle there and I'm the fine liner bottle that I'm using is the one with the yellow label. I get asked that a lot. It's not the blue label. The blue label needle is really thin and hard to get glue out of, so always get the yellow one. Um, it's worked great for me for a while. As you can see, that bottle has been through several years of <laughs> messy scrapping. It doesn't even have a label. It just has, has sticky finger residue on it, as does my desk. Anyway, I'm going to start to work on the photos here. I'm going to add a little bit of white tissue paper behind them just to start the layering process. I just love how this looks. I like that it's uneven and um, it's just a very subtle layer, you know, and sometimes subtle things make all the difference. Sometimes they don't, but I just, I like to start there and then build on it. Now I am going to add some layers of paper behind the photos. Um, because when I first determined that I wanted to use that colorful book paper and I knew I had these photos in mind, I was debating about whether to print them in color or black and white because there are so many colors in the photos and I didn't want the colorful photos to compete with all the colors in the books. But then I decided, no, I like all the colors in the photos, so I'm going to print them in color and just make it work. So now the, the, the photos are going to sort of overlap the bottom part of the word. I, I need something to separate the photo from all that pattern and all that color. So I'm looking for pattern papers that have more of a solid read on them. So I'm looking, I'm looking for like the solid yellow, the dark pink, just to kind of give me a little bit of separation between all those books and the photos. Because sometimes if your photos are really busy with lots of color, like these are, and then your background is busy with a lot of color, like this one is, 
sometimes they can blend together and get lost in each other and you want them to stand out on their own. Now this is a sticker book um, from several years ago that Paige Evans put out that had I think three or four of her older collections uh, included in there. So I pulled that sticker book out and it's got the Pick Me Up collection in it. So uh, these are all mainly paper stickers or some clear stickers, some foiled stickers. And yeah, I'm just going to go through and stick them all to some cardstock because they're really thin. And I kind of want to make them into die cuts. So I'm going to put them on some pattern, or not pattern paper, some cardstock, and then cut them out and start to play around with them and just kind of move them around the page and see what looks good where. Because I'm not sure, you know, what I'm going to embellish with or how much I want to add. Just not sure. So this is where I'm, I'm going to start, you know, just start to play around with everything and kind of get some ideas of what I may want to use. Then I decided that there was just too much white going on. And I'm so excited. I finally ordered this little package of foam ink daubers from scrapbook.com. I'm probably the last person on the planet to get these. They're so cute. And they come with this little case. Oh my goodness. Because my other ink foam blending tool I had for so many years that it was literally disintegrating when I would use it. So yeah, it was time to upgrade. Um, yeah, I decided to not leave this paper white. Hence what I'm doing now. I'm using my Distress Oxides to lightly smudge some color around the letters using these cute little daubers. And then my water brush to squeeze out just a little bit of water to blend the color. I'm not trying to color the whole thing. I'm just kind of going around the letters in a couple spots and then, you know, adding water to kind of make it watercolor-ish. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure if this was a good decision. Once I did it, I thought, eh, should I have left it white? I just felt like there was a lot of white, you know? And sometimes that's a good thing, and sometimes I'm thinking it just needs something else. So, you know, sometimes you just go with it, and I just felt like this was needed. And I think in the end, it was a good decision. It was okay. Um, yeah, so I'm just using all the matching colors that I have in my stash here and we're going around there and i couldn't find a distress oxide in my stash of that deep orange color so i'm going to mix two shimmers colors here i'm mixing ruby and mustard seed and then splattering or not splattering um brushing it around to mix it and it was the perfect mix to get that deeper orange color and i'm just going to do that around the e because I was trying to go with the, the colors of thread that I used to stitch around the letters. So pink, orange, yellow, and blue. And I still feel like there's, like there's plenty of white space on the layout. Um, this is definitely what I would call a layout from scratch, meaning <laughs> I just started with a lot of white cardstock and kind of, you know, went from there. Um, I'm going to add white splatters because, you know, I'm obsessed with white splatters and I just like how it looks. I like the effect it creates and it's just white acrylic paint. It's just cheap white acrylic paint. I stick the, the brush into the water to add a, a little bit of water to the paint to make it thinner so it splatters easier and just go to town splattering it and i like how that turned out i like how the the the, the reed paper turned out i'm glad i added that color to it um, i don't feel like it's too busy i don't feel like it takes away from the books or the photos it just adds more color i like it um, now before i start to glue things down or add anything else i'm going to come in with some thread and i'm going to go with three colors i'm going to use that darker orange color down at the bottom and then over to the left, I'm going to use that purplish blue color. And I'm only going to use the thread down on the bottom half of the page around the photos because I'm going to try to stay away from adding much more to the title area because first, it's such a big design element and it's really busy with all the colors. So I'm trying to not make that area of the layout any busier than it is. So I'm looking for 
small things that I can put around the photos and, and not encroach. Is that a real word? Encroach? I think it is. <laughs> encroach on top of the photos and make them too cramped, I guess is what I was trying to say. Um, I like to overlap things on top of the photos when they allow it and they're not too busy. Um, I'm adding green thread over to the right. Christmas green. And the only reason I'm using that color is because there are two Christmas green books in the title. Usually I stay away from that color green because it just, it's just not my jam. But in this case, it works. Um, I like how everything is looking this far. So I'm going to start to glue things down. I'm going to use this little piece here for the date, which I'll write in later and then start to glue down. I am going to overlap that little circle sticker onto the photo on the right because there was a little bit of open space there. And I am going to overlap the two photos. So the, um, the one on the right is going to be on top of the one on the left, but I don't feel like that's covering up anything important because the photos are very similar just in one of them she's got the book further away and then the other one it's closer so you know I just kind of went boom 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 with the camera and got what I could before she moved because you know how that goes just when you want them to sit still long enough to get the photo they move <laughs> at least mine do um, I decided to add a little bit of a blue border around the yellow photo so I just kind of cut a little L shape to kind of wedge in there just to, uh, again, separate that. Since that photo is really on top of the R and the E, I wanted just a sliver more of separation. Um, and so that provided that. And then I'm going to use this die, well, it was a sticker, but I made it into a die cut that says books. It said books and more books, but I just cut off one of the books. And it's going to go right there to kind of complete the title. And it's just going to be read books, nothing fancy, but I like it. I wanted to use that big design element as part of the title. So title is done and I'm going to add a couple of smaller stickers. Oh, oh, I forgot. I used some rub-ons from Pick Me Up. I was worried that these weren't going to work because, you know, it seems that rub-ons have a shelf life and if you don't use them when they're fairly new, they get dry and they don't rub on, but these still worked. Voila. It looks like I stitched little X's up there and I just wanted to use that. So that's where that went. And it worked. They still worked. I was very, very impressed. Um, a couple stickers are going to go underneath books. I think the pink one says good things are coming. And then the other one says love it. And then this one also says love it. And it's an orange color. So uh, it's also got some gold foiling on it. I did want to add something up there, but something that was more on the solid side. And so that orange sticker looks more like a solid color. It's not something that's patterned that's going to overpower the title. This is also from the sticker book. It's a little sheet of border stickers and I wanted to use this hot pink scallop and kind of wedge it underneath where this paper is torn just to give it a little bit of something peeking out from underneath it and I love that effect. I'm going to add some to the right and then just a smidgen of it over to the left I like that effect where it looks like you've got something covered up and it's just barely peeking out but it just gives a fun detail and it creates some some dimension and some depth and then this little sliver here was not scalloped I wish it was um, so I'm gonna tear it it's orange and I'm gonna just make a little tiny sliver of a layer underneath the bottom of the photos there to kind of bring that orange color down to that area and then I'm going to add in a couple of heart stickers. Now this, this little sticker book is from the Whimsical collection, which is also a few years old. Another Paige Evans collection. And um, yeah, I'm just looking through both of these sticker books to find little tiny things to, to stick down. And so I decided with hearts. So I'm going to add a yellow one and a blue one over on the right. And then I think this one's orange over by that little arrow that says look try a couple other things, decide against it, keep looking. That sticker book has so many stickers in it. Um, I pulled these little white mini foam alphas from Paige Evans Pick Me Up. I think I have so many packs of those because I love, love, love these. They, in the same pack, you get a sheet of white and a sheet of navy blue. I think I have used these 
so many times they're awesome I like that they're small I decided to do a small uh, secondary title at the bottom and I'm just gonna put get comfy because she was and I, I was trying to decide what to put below the photos I needed something um, but the way I situated the title I had this kind of trapped space there so I'm gonna fill that with another strip of that uh, border sticker and then another little um, phrase sticker there and I can't even remember what it says something about making memories make good memories making mem something about memories and then my journaling is gonna go right underneath there and I'm gonna use my um, t-square ruler to draw the lines and then I'm using a black fine tip sharpie we're almost done here I am going to show you what I've got so far in the dimension you can kind of see how the adhesive foam raises the cut file up just slightly just to create some interest and some texture and dimension and I'm gonna write the date I usually stamp the date but since this has an area for it I'm gonna write it there and then I'm gonna use the same pink color that I used earlier to add some splatters I did decide just to do some splattering in the pink at the bottom and then I'm gonna add some I think this is mango tango it's on the orangey side and then I do add some gold because you know why not gold is always a good choice and I think that's gonna wrap it up I do add two little uh, two more little phrase stickers down at the bottom underneath the journaling after I turn off the camera right before I photographed it because I just felt like I needed something down there but that's the final layout and I really like how this turned out and it was a lot of fun to make and it was different you know I don't know it was just one idea popped into my head and then it one thing led to another and that's how it turned out and I hope it inspired you in some way I hope it gives you some ideas to try and I want to thank Becky so much for inviting me to take part in this she is the sweetest scrapper I love her pages she has the most cleanest most perfect magazine worthy layouts ever they're so beautiful I'm gonna link her channel down below I'm gonna link her link to the Amazon wish list for the books uh, donation site down below and thank you guys so so much for watching and I hope you will follow along on the hop have a great day